I want to share with you guys some interesting language and terminology being used for certain individuals out here. The two you're looking at specifically at the top of the list, labeled as threat actors. Now, they're being dubbed this by a company called Zero Fox. They are based out of Baltimore. They are a company who specializes in computer tracking and monitoring and things of that nature. And what they have done, and they admit it. And they can't just label everyone else and not label these guys the same. But they have a small, smaller group of what they call threat actors, and then they have an, another group of people that they think will influence, threat influencers. And that's a larger group. And that has to do with a lot of the people that just gather or that they, they collect off the street. And here's the thing. They know this. And every time that they create a hashtag for one of these events, specifically one that they create, like Black Lives Matter. They will hashtag that with everything and they will spread the word. And as you can see here, they have a massive following. Massive following. Massive following. So when they send out this information, what Zero Fox does in turn is they track anyone and everyone that is tweeting those words, that hashtag. They are actually, what they did in Baltimore is they deemed certain hashtags as threats. Now, as you can see at the top of the list, you have these two. I'm going to go over here and talk about how each threat is designed as some kind of violation. Okay, These violations include the words of chatter, cyber threat, riot, physical threat, threat, violence, and rebellion. And just from one day on April 27th, they compiled 71 threatening pieces of content from Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So if you do not think that they're watching everything, they definitely are like a hawk. Now, one thing I have not seen is any of these leaders at any of these movements warning anyone in the streets that if you continue to use our hashtag, they're going to track your every move, your every word. And if you dare say something dangerous, they're going to deem you a threat. And you may not know it, but that's when your name goes on a list. You see, as this continues, it's in my opinion and my belief that you're watching average people out there in the streets that think they're going to be a part of something good uh, just joining the crowd and then they're being tracked, they're being traced, they're being watched and the leaders of these movements uh, well, they're there by design and I've already covered it from top to bottom from George Soros' bank account to cutting the checks in the street hands down and anyone that wants to deny it is a fool in trying to defend them and if I catch somebody doing that it's pretty obvious you're connected to it and that's dangerous lines drawn in the sand folks you either ride for the enemy or you ride against it and as far as I'm concerned right now you know they're watching everything yes they're tracking everything. They're tracking your emails, their text messages, all every video, every tweet. They're watching everything. You know this. Okay, so don't let so-called leaders out here string you along. Never mention the fact that you're being monitored or watched or anything. And get you out here in the streets, rallying you up, getting you hyped up. And as we've seen in Cincinnati twice now, when Black Lives Matter came to Cincinnati, twice it resulted in individuals going to jail. And it's funny because if you guys were watching my live stream in the pouring rain down there in front of the courthouse for Sam DeBose, there were two groups on the ground. And they didn't know each other, didn't much care for each other it seemed. 
and that was the Black Lives Matter group with their bullhorn, and then there was the Sam DeBose Friends and Family group with their bullhorn. Now, wouldn't you think if Black Lives Matter was in town for that reason, they would be with the family and friends? No. They had their own message. They had their own agenda. And if you don't believe me, you can go right on over to my Ustream, and you can watch the video footage yourself. The man in white, which was Sam DeBose's friend, screamed at the whole crowd and warned them not to to follow the Black Lives Matter crowd because they're going to take them to jail. He screamed it, he warned it, and people actually listened and stopped. But a lot of people followed. He knew it. So there's a big problem when these groups are coming to town, supposed to be representing peace and unity, Black Lives Matter, and it's all for Sam DeBose, but yet you're not even hanging with Sam DeBose's friends and family? Oh, they had to go out of their way the next day to make sure they could drug in one of the family members uh, so they could have them up there on the stage with them when all the cameras came out. You see? But not the true friends. You'll see it in that video. They were calling them out. And that's what needs to happen. That's what stopped anything from sparking in Cleveland. I witnessed it with my own eyes. So... A lot of information here. But just to let it be known, when you see these big hashtags going out from these groups here in the future, just know that they're going to be heavily monitored. And they're going to be looking for what they deem as being threatening language. So, I'll leave links. It's been Dabu7.